Tanya, for you as an experienced teacher, uh, what are you finding are the, the big three challenges of implementing the Australian curriculum in a multi-age class? Um, the first big challenge is when you're looking at the science and history uh, curriculum areas is that the huge difference between the year six and the year sevens. So using history as an example, um, the year sixes need to look at immigrants migrating to Australia after World War II and then looking at ancient Greece, which is clearly piles apart. So um, it's about finding the balance um, it's about making sure that I meet all of the achievements required by both my Year 6, 7 students. So that's my first hurdle. Um, the second hurdle, I guess, is the amount of outcomes that I have to um, try and make sure my children or students actually can understand. So with maths, for example, I think I have about 76 outcomes, which I need to ensure that my students um, have some understanding and knowledge about. So. When I break that down at the start of the year and I think, oh my goodness, I have 40 weeks to teach all this stuff. So it comes about integrating my learning program and um, making sure that the students are in their ability groups. But on the flip side of that, I also need to make sure that my year sevens, depending on whatever the level may be, that they are getting access to all of the curriculum outcomes. So it's not that they haven't, haven't had exposure to that. Okay, and the third, big hurdle is um, I guess actually assessing the students and giving them their grade. Um, there's been a lot of conversation around the C that they're achieving at their level um, and then it comes down to am I providing learning experiences for my children so that they can achieve an A or a B. So which means that obviously I guess the headset was that um, we've provided them with a learning experience which is beyond the year level that um, we are planning for. Um, and I guess there's still lots of conversation going on about what is an A, what is a B, what is a C. And I guess at the moment for me, just having done mid-year reports, that's my biggest challenge. Um, is the grade that I've assigned my students, is that across the state, would that student, if they walked into any other school, would that be the same grade? And I guess realistically for us at Jervoice, it's about consistency for our parents. So the grade we assign mid-year report it needs to be consistent with the end of year report and that needs to flow through the whole school but whether that's going to be consistent throughout the state that's I think the challenge that is faced by every teacher. So Tanya what are you doing in a multi-year level classroom to meet or exceed the expectations of delivering the Australian curriculum? Um, so the first thing that I need to do when I'm delivering the Australian curriculum is making sure that I have clear teacher intentions so that's about me making sure that I'm really clear on the content that I'm going to be teaching and that often means a drive out to school with my 20 minutes of rehearsing exactly what I'm going to say, um, making sure that I've got the correct terminology so that the students are also really clear on what I want to teach them. Um, and I guess by me doing all of that, it means that you steer well clear of worksheets and it means getting into providing students with real life problem solving where, for example, if students are doing area, um, rather than providing them with a little sheet with a rectangle which tells them the measurements, yep, they work out that it's 35 centimetres squared, as opposed to saying to them, okay, we're going to lay some carpet in our school, um, you need to find the linear measurements of the room and then calculate the area. Um, obviously, they can see a, real, see a real life purpose for it, so firstly, that intention is very clear. Um, and I guess that then leads on to me being able to give them a score or a grade from A to E and it's about me as a teacher making sure that I provide learning opportunities where students can achieve an A and I think the worksheets um, don't allow that to happen because you can't see students applying the reasoning and using their problem solving skills. So I guess by providing students with those learning opportunities I'm hoping that um, if I give my student an A it means in the suburbs of Sydney that they will receive an A doing that same exact task wherever they are in Australia. I think any teacher needs to view themselves as a learner. Um, you need to be accessing the various resources that are available to you and becoming as informed as you possibly can on whatever topic or content you, you may be teaching. Um, and I guess in reality it's about as teachers improving our practice. So 
For me, I have changed significantly in the way that I work with the students. So it's much more about being collaborative and more the conversations, rather than me driving those conversations, it's about the students driving the conversations. Um, I find that if students share the way they may solve a problem, it may not even be a way that I had even thought of. And if I can have six different kids sharing six different ways I've solved a problem, there may be another student who has never thought of that way and they go, oh yeah, I understand that, I get that. And I may never have actually gone down that path. So that's firstly the first thing, making sure we value the students and their contributions. Um, and I guess the other really important thing is to know that it's more than just the content. It's more than knowing um, six plus six is 12. It's about being able to apply that. Um, and so that basically they can use the information in any setting. Yes, I need to teach the content, but I think more importantly for me is I need to be able to teach them how to find that content. It's about, basically we know we can Google anything and find it, but it's about when we encounter a problem, when we're searching for that information, what do I need to do? I don't put my hand up and go, oh, I can't find it, where is it? It's about, okay, well think about what you might need to do next in order to find that. You could ask someone for help. What, okay, what else could you do? So it's about making sure the students are constantly thinking through problems, working through them, and then having that reflection. It's really important that you provide the for reflection for the kids on the learning. Otherwise, once again, it doesn't really show that as teachers we value the learning that we've provided for them. So that reflection is really important. Um, looking at the four areas that have been released in maths, science, history, and English, um, for me, the biggest challenge and probably the biggest hurdle for me is definitely English. Um, when I looked at the achievement standards of English, I kind of looked at them and went, oh my goodness, where, where do I start with unpacking these? And then how do I actually provide learning experiences for my students so that they can actually achieve these? So I guess <clears throat> I need to start and unpacking the English curriculum in detail and for me, even as an experienced teacher, um, that needs to happen for me collaboratively. Like, otherwise, I think I'd just find myself drowning in the terminology that kind of doesn't always fit coherently like it does for me with maths I can, and the history and the science. Like For me, that is a lot more coherent, whereas the English, I'm sort of still confused, and I think lots of people are in that same boat. Um, so I guess, realistically, it's about providing opportunities for teachers to get together and actually talk about and unpack the terminology used in the curriculum and then also about developing learning plans together so that everyone can be on the same page and I guess move through it together.